the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And now at 7, another child shot and killed in the district, this time in the parking lot of a high school in Northwest. The mayor's plea a day after she testified to Congress about crime in the nation's capital. Plus, a racist email sent to the cheer coach at Oakton High School prompts an investigation by Fairfax County Public Schools. Now, criticism that it took the district too long to go public. We'll take a look at the arguments and the search for who sent the email. And a Maryland woman crochets for a special cause, auctioning handmade items that benefited playground in honor of two sisters who died in a house fire. And good evening, everyone. A good amount of sunshine for your afternoon and clearing for tonight, but we have frost concerns. Many spots down to about 32 degrees. We'll get that forecast coming up. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 7 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm the Smeen Muffies. Our top story tonight, another teenager has been shot and killed in DC tonight. Police confirming a 17 year old died after being shot in a parking lot right outside of Roosevelt High School. Yeah, DC News Now's Mario Carbona has been outside the school all afternoon. And Mario, even the mayor was on scene late this afternoon. Uh, yeah, that's right, Chris, because uh, crime has been a big focus for the mayor all week long. She's been talking about it and uh, legislation on trying to bring down some of the gun violence and crime we're seeing, but the shootings are still happening uh, and a lot of children involved. We know earlier this week, a 10 year old, a 12 year old both shot and now this 17 year old, a student killed here at Roosevelt High School. So this shooting, it happened in the parking lot, which is in the back side of the school. Police say that they were called out here around 224 this afternoon. So that is during school hours. Uh, and when they got here, they found that teen uh, suffering from one gunshot wound. Now he was taken to the hospital uh, where the teen was pronounced dead. Police know that multiple shots were fired and a gun was recovered out here. But at this point, they're still piecing together how that all fits together uh, and the order that those bullets were fired. Uh, all of this sent area schools into lockdown. There are a few schools within the block of this uh, and take a listen to what the mayor had to say about that in the response out here. We regard our schools as the safest place for our children. Uh, sadly, uh, we have uh, a young person outside of the school building during the school hours. And we have people we think in our community who can tell us more. And now police say they don't believe any of the students inside this school or any of the other schools in the area were in any danger. That lockdown is just protocol. Uh, and again, that shooting happened just uh, isolated in the parking lot. Now, as far as suspects go, we aren't sure. Uh, we are not hearing exactly from police how many people could have been involved, if they were students or not. Uh, the assistant police chief out here today said that they're still piecing through a lot of different video, looking to talk to witnesses. And so they're really pleading with anybody that knows anything to come forward and share that information information. Uh, the assistant chief saying that that is the only way uh, that the family members of this teen that was killed will find any justice out here. Reporting live in Petworth tonight, I'm Ariel Carbone, DC News Now. Amara, thank you. Meanwhile, a woman was stabbed on or near the University of DC campus today. Happened around 1245 this afternoon. Police reported the incident in the 4200 block of Wisconsin Avenue Northwest. They are looking for a male with short blonde hair and a stocky build. The contact MPD if you have any information. Meanwhile, new details tonight. Two staff members for Virginia Congressman Jerry Connolly are out of the hospital tonight following that savage attack by a man with a baseball bat on Monday. And now an FBI affidavit is revealing new details into that attack. Now we told you about the intern who was at the office on her first day. It turns out she was in the middle of being trained when the suspect broke through the door and hit the person training them in the head with the baseball bat. The intern then started running away before she got hit in the ribs. The attacker then went back to the first victim, then started smashing items in the office, yelling Jerry Conley's name out loud. Now we caught up with the congressman on Capitol Hill yesterday. Take a listen. Uh, the idea that you could walk into work where you've been working for a while, or in the case of my intern, her first day, and someone comes in with a baseball bat and beats you up. Um, is very shocking and I think uh, it's going to take a long time to recover from. All right, we have a brand new statement from the congressman tonight. It reads from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of my entire team, 
I want to thank everyone for the outpouring of support during what has been a very difficult time for us. Your kindness and concern have made a positive difference as we process the horrific events of this week. My staff members who suffered injuries in the attack have both been released from the hospital. Their well-being is my highest priority right now. Meanwhile, all new tonight, a racist email sent to the cheer coach at Oakton High School. It happened two months ago, but was only recently made public. Yeah, now in Fairfax County Public Schools is launching a third party investigation. KC News Now's Daniel Hamburg talked with the education chair, chair of the Fairfax County NAACP, who says the district didn't act quickly enough. Fairfax County Public Schools says the email was sent at the end of March, though the NAACP didn't get a copy of it until the end of April. Leaders with the NAACP says the district needs to address a deeply rooted culture of racism. As someone who sees these messages all the time, this is the worst one I've seen. Sujata Hampton says she was shocked to see an anonymous and clearly racist email sent to the current cheer coach at Oakton High School. The tone of the email was so um, antiquated, egregious, the way I've been saying it's like 1950s massive resistance type messaging. According to the NAACP, the message said, quote, many of us would not feel comfortable with another colored individual coaching cheerleading at Oakton. Going on to say, many of the girls were shocked to see another coach last season with such dark and strong features. The coach from last season, 23 years old at the time. They did not even reach out to her first to, to tell her that this had happened, that it had to come from another parent that, that told her it's disrespectful. In a statement, the district said, quote, FCPS works hard each day to create a school environment where all students and staff are valued and feel accepted and supported. We condemn all hateful behavior. Now, the district says it did try to find who wrote that email, but couldn't figure it out. Hampton isn't satisfied and thinks the district should have said. Until then, cheer is canceled because the kids aren't safe. That's what I really believe. The kids aren't safe as long as that culture perva is pervasive there. The school district sent a letter to families today saying that once that third party investigation is completed, they will share the results and also if any action can be taken by the school district. In Oakton, Virginia, Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. And developing now a new inspector general report is spelling out trouble ahead for Metro. If transit leaders don't act fast to fix some major cybersecurity concerns. DC News Now's Joseph Alma reports. Hey, good evening. Here it is, an eight-page memo from Metro's Inspector General. Inside, new information revealing that a Russian contractor still had high-level access to Metro's IT, even though he was no longer working with the agency. So it is a pretty packed report here. But here is the gist. Earlier this year, the Inspector General was alerted about abnormal activity coming from Russia. Investigators discovered that even though the contractor no longer worked for Metro, he was still allowed to access systems and networks under the hope that his work contract would be renewed. The Inspector General report also cited several different examples where the transit system has failed at maintaining secure online systems. Now, this report was brought to management's attention back in January of this year. Metro responded by saying since then, they've met weekly with the Office of the Inspector General to discuss cyber security. Reporting here in the studio, Joseph Olmo, DC News Now. Back to you. And earlier this afternoon, Metro responded to that report, saying in part this, there was no breach or hack of WMATA's network. WMATA immediately blocked and cut off the contractor's access to WMATA's network. Metro takes the security of our network and our assets very seriously. Hi everyone, a good amount of sunshine across uh, the DMV this afternoon. We do have a few concerns, a frost advisory. It is in place across uh, areas west of the district for tonight. I'm seeing some readings with uh, wind chills down to about 31 uh, degrees across uh, Frederick, Maryland into uh, Westminster as well. So I want to prepare you for that. It starts around midnight tonight. It will be extended until about 8 a.m. So any sensitive vegetation, it needs to be brought inside. I know this is very 
started late in the season, and it's not just us. We have Central PA into upstate New York, much of the same, and it's due to all this clearing that is unfolding across our region. Right now at the 7 o'clock hour, 71 out towards the district into uh, Fairfax County, Leesburg as well. We are currently 74 for Woodstock, so it is uh, fairly on the mild side uh, the farther west you go at this time, and, but these temperatures, they are going to drop pretty rapidly here, and our temperature change, you can see it's very well divided. It has been a little bit warmer this afternoon for our west, and then farther east you go, we are below average. Hey, we're going to talk about more sunshine and the frost concerns. Our weather team is also tracking a little bit of rain for the start of your weekend. We'll look at that coming up. A new video tonight. A viewer sent us this video from their rain doorbell camera of a bear roaming around in her front <laughs> yeah. yard. Take a look at it. It happened in Clover Ridge and Frederick on Monday, May 8th. It's just uh, roaming around having some <laughs> fun, right? Uh, just yesterday, you may remember, we reported on a bear in Frederick County that was sedated and then relocated. It's not clear, though, if this is the same bear or perhaps a different one. So it's a cutie, though. It's getting around. He is a cutie, right? <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> just stay squirt. inside if you see it. <laughs> yeah. All right, coming up.